Do you feel like the Fed is just so far behind the curve at this point that it's going to be difficult for them to ever, you know, make it up and, quote, win the game by giving us any kind of a soft economic landing? Well, I do agree that certainly their commentary and for the past two or three weeks has been very Hail Mary-ish uh, and getting increasingly hawkish. Um, but I do believe that their actions, look, just looking at the Federal Reserve, um, the Federal Reserve rarely is at a step for more than one to two quarters. I think they have so much power behind them that they will be able to catch up within a relatively short period of time. So they might go overboard. They might be doing, you know, they might make some more missteps as they've made missteps coming into it. They might make yeah. mistakes, make missteps getting us out. Um, and that could be an overcorrection. Uh, but I think the good thing is that this new Fed is a lot more responsive. Uh, and so if they see that they're making a mistake, uh, they'll pull it back rather quickly. So it's just, unfortunately, as investors, we still have to go through three to six months of pains of undercorrections and overcorrections and just sort yeah. of ride it out and work with what the Fed is doing. Well, I wonder, do we? Because I'm looking at a 10-year yield, Aaron, which is just under 3%. I mean, at this rate, in a couple of days, we're going to get back above 3%. And it feels like the bond market is way ahead of the Fed, or no? Do you think the bond market still has a lot of room to move if the Fed continues to be more aggressive? Yes, so I should have made that correction. I actually think the bond market is actually being fairly rational. Uh, I think it's more the equity markets that are getting more emotional. So every time there's some new hawkish comments, you know, we get that, that massive sell-off and the, those risk-off trade versions. Um, so yeah, I actually think the bond market has been um, rather stable in that the yields have been continually going up. We haven't seen any big switches where we're seeing, you know, yields go down or, or you know, even not much flattening. It's very, it's been pretty consistent that they're slowly moving up. And that inversion is at least between the two, between the two to up to the 10 years uh, is starting to flatten. So the inversions are becoming a little less. Um, so in that sense, yeah, I think the bond market is, saying, yeah, guys, we, you know, we've, we've been through this. We know that you're going to correct it. Um, on the other side, on the equity side, I think we're seeing yeah. more of that volatility. You know, the S&P is down big this year. But, Aaron, if you break it out as you do with growth and value, the S&P growth index is just grim. It's down 13 percent this year. What happened overnight? Is it merely these higher bond yields that are just crushing multiples? Uh, I mean, when you look at it, it seems uh, it's sort of there two, there's a twofold story. I mean, part of it is these higher yields are just crushing growth types of companies. So, yeah, when you look, when you split it between value and growth, essentially value has been pretty much flat. It's down a little less than 1% year to date, but it, it just sort of hovers over this relatively straight line versus growth just on this very negative trajectory down 14% year to date. And that's what's pulling the broad markets down. Um, but on the other hand, the other part of this story is that um, it's not value industries across the board, because when you drill into value, it's very much about energy, uh, materials, uh, and utilities that are, are positive for year and really pulling up the entire index. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's not just about style. It's very much sector specific. Um, and that's what I've been advising my investors is yeah. not to just simply go into your style indices, but really drill into the individual sectors.